How pleasant and beautiful it is for brethren to stand together. Let us all bow our heads for one moment. Amen. Heavenly Father, God of our fathers, our from Yitzchak and Yaakov, Amen. as we proceed with this most momentous occasion, calling upon you to be with, is, be with us in this hour and in this time, as we offer up our prayers unto you, O Most High Creator of all the worst, of, the, of all the world, bless each and every one of us this day. Hallelujah. Those who are standing here before us this day, and also the families in which they represent. Amen. Bless the elderly. Yes. Bless the children. Amen. Bless those who are in the womb. Mm who are coming out to serve thee, O Most High God. Hallelujah. We ask thee, O Most High God, to look upon this body this morning. Hallelujah. The chief rabbi. God bless you. The teachers. Amen, amen. And especially the students. Hallelujah. We are all, all asking you, O Most High God, to bless them as they go out into the world mm. to do the service of the almighty God. Yes. Bless them in their journey, O Most High God. Just, our, just as thou has blessed Abram, mm. who started his journey Amen. with your blessings. Hallelujah. We ask thee to consider them. Mm. The time in which they have to remove themselves from their families when the community calls upon them in their hour of need. Amen. Bless them, their families, their children, and all those who come in contact with them. Mm. Oh, Most High God, we know that art, art the great king of all the universe. Hallelujah. For therefore, Most High God, accept this prayer by our offer unto thee. Amen. These and all thy words I ask in the high and most exalted name, Adonai of Shimo, the Emru. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Shalom Aleichem. First and foremost, giving all honor and praise to the Holy One, blessed be He, who has restored life unto those who are living. I will be your MC for the remainder of this afternoon during these wonderful, wonderful programs that we have. And 
I pray that you will all, because it's a little warm, so we're going to get through this. Yeah. But just be a little patient. We're going to make it happen. But the first thing I need to do is to declare that the 2023 commencement exercises of the Israelite Academy is now open. We are so proud to have this many students to graduate at this particular moment. Usually it's sporadic, you know, one or two. That lets us believe that we're doing something right. Amen. And we have made leaps and bounds. And to have this many coming out in this year. I haven't seen this, I believe, since 1977. Mm -hmm. So we are thankful and we thank God that he has not turned his back on us and he is giving us the wherewithal to stand and we pray that he will give all of these graduates that face of flint that they will be able to withstand all that they will have to endure in the near future. The person that I'm gonna bring forward to you to bring the welcome address is a brother of mine and then we're all brothers. But uh, we go back a long way. Uh, his father, Shalom Alai, my father, Shalom, were very dear friends. And he even picked up some of Marvel's habits. <laughs> you know, so I know he was impressed by it. Oh, yeah. Right? And he has done marvelously. We all know him. We see him. If you haven't seen him, you've heard him. And he is currently the president of the International Israelite Board of Rabbis, the immediate past dean of the Israelite Academy, and a true soldier, a worker in our cause. Amen. I am so glad to present to you Rabbi Shalomo Levi Ben Levi. Shalom Aleichem. Rishon. First. They call Zeman Rishon. And always first. Ani noten kavod. Shabach lehalel. I give all honor and praise. Le El El Yom. El Hagadov. El Hanora. El Shaddai. Elohe Avotenu. The God of our ancient ancestors. Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Yosef, Moshe, Aharon, David, Shalomo, Yirmiyahu, Yeshayahu, Vekol, Zechanim, Vekol, Nevi'im, HaYisrael, Elohe Imotenu, the God of our ancient mothers, Sara, Rivka, Rachel, Velea, Devorah, Ruth, Miriam, Naomi, Hadassah, Yael, Vekol, Zedikim, Vechasidim, and all the righteous from the past to the present. I also give honor to our chief rabbi, Kepa Shmuel Fenet. To all the faculty of the Israelite Academy. To all the students and their families and children who are gathered here today. I thank you for coming, not only to support them, but to be witnesses to history. For this is an historic occasion. The graduation and ordination of another generation of rabbis who will carry us long into the future. And you can say I was there when it happened. How good and how pleasant it is to be present. The title of my commencement address today is called For Such a Time as This. For Such a Time as This. Many of the rabbinical students will recognize this as a verse from the book of Esther, the fourth chapter, the 14th verse, where Mordecai says to Esther, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. Mm -hmm. Of course, I looked it up in the Hebrew, and it did say Yehudim, not Yisrael. Mm -hmm. 
because this occurred during the Babylonian exile when she was there in Shushan the palace, exiled from the land of Israel. And at that time, they were all called Jews. And this is what she says. And this is what Mordecai tells her. For if you remain silent at this time of relief, deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your family will perish. And who knows? But you have come into the royal position for such a time as this. Rabbis, this is your time. You were chosen for this time. You are in the right time and the right place, and we believe you are the right people mm -hmm. for this time. The rabbis who stand before you today answer the divine call. Who will go for me? Who shall I send? Mm -hmm. In that sense, you were chosen to embark on this mission. And on this mission, you will face several challenges, and that is what I wanted to share with you today. I asked to be able to speak at the graduation rather than the ordination because it's really to the students that I want to give some advice and prepare them for their mission. Among the challenges that this generation will have to face is unprecedented cynicism. There has never been a generation of people who have less trust in their leaders. This is true of our political leaders of all parties. Mm. Polls show that a majority of people no longer trust the Supreme Court mm. to do what is right. They still admire celebrities for their wealth and talent in the areas of sports and entertainment, but no one is under the illusion that celebrities possess any more virtue honor or morality than anyone else. So Will Smith and Jada Pinkett and Bill Cosby were once our role models for the ideal black family. Not anymore. Religious leaders of all faiths and denominations have suffered a similar fate. I have a Catholic friend who attends church regularly but thinks that any parent who will leave a child alone with the priest is acting irresponsibly. Mm -hmm. So how should we confuse popularity with trust? Millions of people attend places of worship just like they attend concerts and sporting events. Your mission, graduates, is to regain trust and confidence at a time when people have become skeptical and suspicious. The other challenge that you're gonna face is dealing with atheists and agnostics. Now, atheists are people who don't believe in God. Agnostics are people who say, I don't know, I'm not sure. These are people who would never describe themselves as atheists and agnostics, but that's how I'm categorizing today. In other words, these are people who may observe some religious traditions, weddings, bar mitzvahs, a Passover Seder. But they do so out of a sense of tradition, family expectations, or because of the fellowship they enjoy with the people in their congregation. All of these are powerful and compelling root reasons. Routines and habits are hard to break. Family expectations and a sense of guilt for not coming also provides motivation. And psychologists would tell us that religious attendance may satisfy the ego of worshipers who feel better about themselves or even morally superior to those who don't attend service. My point here is none of these reasons relate to a belief in the existence of an everlasting God. That reason may fall very low on that list if it exists at all. As I drove around my neighborhood, I am amazed by how much time, money, and energy people put into decorating their lawns for Halloween. It's amazing and a little scary. 
Yet I would wager, yet I would wager that none of my neighbors actually believe in ghosts or witches, nor have they invested much thought in trying to understand the history and beliefs associated with the holiday. They do it because it's fun, they enjoy it, and it has been their tradition for many years and even generations. And after Thanksgiving, they will decorate their homes for Christmas with the same passion and dedication. You see my point? They just change the decorations. They don't really believe in any of this. Getting religious people to actually believe in God is a challenge. Mm. Getting young people to believe that God is not something that foolish people believe in is going to be your mission. And you were chosen for this time. My final point is that you're going to have to deal with changing society. Mm. Transcending religion, nationality, and racial identity are, and all other forms of particularism in order to embrace the humanity of all people is your highest mission. Amen. Let me repeat that so you could hear it. Transcending religion, nationality, racial identity, and all other forms of particularism in order to embrace the humanity of all people is your highest mission. This last mission was also the mission of every generation of rabbis, ministers, and imams who came before you. And we have all failed. And so it is your mission to undertake the same task, but to succeed where we have failed. Hmm. When you look at what is happening in the Middle East today, you would be forced to conclude that we fail miserably. I mean, if Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all derive from Abraham, then why have these people been killing each other for centuries while claiming that they practice a religion of love and peace? This causes many rational people to wonder if the world would be better without religion and nationality of any kind. What are you new rabbis going to say to people who believe that religion has done more to divide the world than it has to unite it? What is your answer? What is your explanation? What are you going to say to them? You are going to have to find answers to those questions. The fact that you are graduating today means that you have mastered a vast body of knowledge. You have earned your degrees and the title master or teacher. But mastering isn't enough. You must be able to make the words of Torah real in the world. Start by making the words of Torah real in your own life. Don't practice a form of routine religion. And don't encourage your congregants to be religious robots. God chose us to repair the world. Kun ulam. Mm -hmm. Fixing something requires understanding how it is broken and the things and people who broke it in order to fix it and not break it again. And so you look at the previous generations, what we did right, what we did wrong, how some of the things that we did helped break the world in the first place. Mm. And then you'll know what to do to fix it. First, you have to identify the problem and then the answer might present itself. Your mission may seem daunting, or as Tom Cruise says, it may be a mission impossible. Mm. It will require heroic acts on your part. You will not be able to do it alone. Maintain the spiritual brotherhood that you experienced as students. You will become the next leaders of the Israelite Board of Rabbis as I prepare to retire. So I would like to leave you on a positive and optimistic note. People change when they need to change. 
That is why words alone are usually insufficient. Fortunately for these new rabbis, two powerful forces are about to converge that will transform the world in ways we can hardly imagine. In my opinion, the first is a technological revolution that will make most of the jobs that humans do today completely obsolete. You don't have to believe me. That's OK. When I graduated from the Israelite Academy 40 years ago, I know that people might not think I'm old enough to be that, but I was, I was 20 and about to turn 60, so that's 40. When I graduated 40 years ago, my father, Chief Rabbi Levi Belevi, predicted that the internet, he called it the information superhighway. So it didn't even have a name yet. Mm. What we call the internet was just coming into being. And he told us, Rabbi Brooke was there, maybe he remembered. Yes, I remember my graduation speech. Yes, sir. You might not remember this one, but I remember <laughs> when my father gave one. And he said to me and to the graduates and those presents that this new information superhighway that later became uh, the internet would transform my generation. And he was prophetic in the accuracy of his vision. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Today, I'm telling you that these trends will accelerate to the point where most humans are of little value to the economy. Mm. With that loss of employment, most people will suffer a loss of identity. They will be asking, what am I supposed to do now? What is the purpose of my life in this society? Then, rabbis will be there to answer them in the words of Micah. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with thy God? And what AI does has nothing to do with that. It doesn't affect you. That is your true mission and purpose in life. But we have come to believe that we are just some cog in a machine to make money for some corporation or whatever it is we work for. Without that, we don't have a purpose in life. And so people don't understand that now. But when this happens, they will, and you will be there. The second for, uh, force that is sweeping through the earth is called global climate change. I know that we have a lot of science skeptics and maybe a few science deniers. Graduates, I am telling you that the creator of the universe is about to do something to this planet. Yes, sir. His hand turns the earth and the breath of his nostrils blows the wind. Come on. He causes the rain to fall and makes the sun shine upon the earth. Therefore, if the climate is changing, then we know for sure that it is the creator who determines the temperature. They laughed at Noah when he said, mm -hmm. the climate is going to change and the waters are going to rise. As these changes take place, people will also panic. Entire cities will be uprooted and become uninhabitable. Nations will go to war for access to water. At that time, when people are panicking and unscrupulous leaders are exploiting their pain and confusion, then you, new rabbis, will arise and say, Elohim et veharetz. And God spoke these words. Uh -huh. And God spoke these words. And then they will be ready to listen to you. Preach global cooperation and interdependence. Amen. We all need each other. We will only survive by working together. Such cooperation will require all to supplement their egos, but also their national identities, the borders between countries. When people are starving without water, will we say, you can't cross into Canada? You can't cross into the Sudan, into Egypt, into Eritrea? Or will we say you are a human being yes. in search of water and a dry and hot planet? Mm. We're going to have to figure out how to do that. Mm. And people are scared of those challenges. And I just remind them when a society wants to do something, it finds a way to do it. Yeah. Centuries ago, they moved 12 million people from the continent of Africa to North America, and they did it in wooden ships. 
So if you can do that, then in the 23rd century, if we say we have to move all the people from this country to another country. All right. <laughs> that's not impossible. We've done that before. We've moved entire populations by force. Mm. So it shouldn't be so hard if they want to get out where they are and go to where they could survive. We're going to have to transcend those national identities, our racial identities, our religious identities. When the water begins to rise, we must row together in order to keep the boat afloat. Come on. Or we will sink and drown as passengers on a ship of fools. When all these things come to pass, the ears of the people will be open and the hearts of the nations will be ready to heed your words. For such a time of this, you were chosen. For such a time of this, you were chosen. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every work into judgment concerning every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Shalom Aleichem. I believe he deserves another round of applause. Yes, sir. <laughs> There's a reason why I liked him all my life. You know. Again, family, we thank God for Rabbi Shalomo. And he scared me almost. He said 40 years. And you know, we don't think about that. We just take life and every day and we just keep moving and existing and existing. And we, re we don't even count the years. All of a sudden, we look back 40 years. You look good, though. You look good. God bless you, sir. You look good. So I concur. Much to do. Not a lot of time to do it in. But it's going to get done. I have faith in God and in, in these men. And I'm just ahead of them. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm just ahead. But we're going to get it and make it happen. Let us stand. We're going to have a musical selection. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening sky. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Don't know the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the day when hope Yet without any plea, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our Father sighed. We have roamed over the way that the spirit has been watered. We have run, dreaming 
the faith in the blood of the slaughtered. Out from the gloomy past, till now we stand at last. With the right swing of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent years, Thou who has brought us thus far on our way, Thou who has bowed Thy might led us into the Keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the path of our God where we met thee. Lest our heart drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to our God, true to our native land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good and his mercy endure forever. We thank him for everything, even this heat. I see the fan moving, we're gonna make it happen. We gotta keep moving. So always in a class, we have a student who is chosen to represent their class. Y'all remember that? Yes, right? I'm looking out there, y'all look like y'all ain't too fast for high school. You're doing all right, college. But there's always that one who represents the class. And it's usually because there's a character, a spirit about that person that makes someone who he's outspoken, he says what he has to say and does what he has to do, but he keeps it on the up and up. Now, I'm thankful that as a parent, we all have children who follow in our footsteps, and it makes you feel good as a parent. You know, we might have seven children, oh, and only a few of them might follow, but those two you're proud of. Not gonna get seven, and if you do, God bless you, but if you get two, you're thankful, right? And I know that his father has to be proud because he looked back and realized, I have one, right? I have many, but I have this one. And not only is he in here, he didn't just sit back in the seat and take it easy. He stood in the forefront of the class and made it known that he was serious about what he was doing. So let us hear from the class representative from the class of 2023, Nehemiah, the son of Chief Rabbi Kaper Shemuel Funye. Hallelujah. Thank you. Please be seated. First and foremost, Give an honor to the eternal, yes, sir. the creator of all things, the God of our forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Thanking him for his grace, love and kindness, and mercy. It is truly an honor and a privilege to stand before you today. To all family, friends, and loved ones that have traveled here to be with us on this special weekend, we greatly appreciate it. Celebrating the 105th year anniversary of Beth Shalom Ben Isaacin, Ethiopian Hebrew congregation. Yeah. 
and celebrating the graduating class of 2023, uh -huh. the rabbinic students of the Israelite Rabbinic Academy. Hallelujah. To our chief, the head of our institute, my father and spiritual leader, yes, yes. Rabbi Caper Shmuel Fene yes. Jr. I want to thank you personally for showing me what it means to be dedicated, mm. for your guidance, for your dedication to this way of life and to our community. You've led us into uncharted territory and represented us with an astute sense of awareness, direction, and purpose. I aspire to be like you. I figure if I'm half as good, I may be all right. <laughs> To the president of our academy, Amen. Rabbi Shlomo Ben Levy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you've been a colleague and a friend of my father's for many years. Right. And I've known you since I was a teenager or younger. Uh -huh. I thank you for your instruction and your words of wisdom over the years. Amen. Yeah. I can recall years ago, I may have been in my late teens. I don't know if you remember this or not, Rabbi. But I was asked to pick you up from the airport. <laughs> and prior to my arrival, you know, I made sure everything was fit to transport the rabbi. I changed my radio station to V103 <laughs> for some smooth jazz, soft listening, you know. So as the rabbi gets in, greets me, and we begin to ride to my parents' house, rabbi asks and he says, so what kind of hip hop do you listen to? Oh. <laughs> I'm not one, of, I'm not that old. Come on, let me hear what you got. So, mind you, I'm 18, 19 at the time. So, you know, my choice of music wasn't Rabbi-esque. <laughs> I'll just say it wasn't the radio version. I don't remember what I played, but whatever it was, it didn't play long. <laughs> Rabbi said, all right, okay, let's go back to the other station. <laughs> <laughs> to our dean, Rabbi Baruch Yehuda. Yeah. <laughs> you too have known me since I was a young teen. I thank you also for your instruction as well, your dedication to Torah, and giving us a deeper understanding and insight to Torah and the keys to life. I don't have any transport stories about you, Rabbi. <laughs> But I will let you know that I'm still licking my wounds from getting fussed at about the last minute request for the miter hats. <laughs> Our beautiful sister Deborah McCullough made miters for everyone that you guys will see tomorrow. So when Rabbi Baruch sent me a text and said, I need another miter for Rabbi Yashurin and also for Rabbi Benyamin. So I knew it was past the deadline, but I can't tell a rabbi I know. So I tried to be slick and I sent Sister Deborah a text. No sooner than my phone said sent, it was ringing. <laughs> and it was our beautiful sister Deborah McCullough. She said, now Trey, what did I tell you? And why did you let them put you up to this? And you knew what was gonna happen. <laughs> but I told our beautiful sister, I said, yes, I know. And I'm willing to take those lashes for my senior rabbi. <laughs> I couldn't tell him no. This is a man you don't wanna disappoint. But I extend my sincere gratitude to all of you, to Rabbi Yashurin, Rabbi Dr. Malka, to all of the rabbis that have taken, and all of the professors that have played a vital role in our education Amen. and ensuring that, we've equipped, we, that we're equipped with the necessary tools to continue to build on the foundation that you and your predecessors have laid for us. To my classmates, my colleagues, my brothers, I've learned something from each and every one of you and I'm grateful for the relationship and the bond that we formed over these past four or five years. I pray that we continue to grow and learn together as we step into roles of leadership in our respective communities, praying that the eternal continues to strengthen and sustain us both mentally and physically and guide our thoughts and our hearts to continue to pursue the ways of Torah. Amen. Now my deepest and most sincere gratitude from the bottom of my heart, 
to my beautiful mother. <laughs> She's also our administrator. Thank you for all that you've done. I, I don't have enough time to sit here and thank you for all that you've done. But thank you for all that you've done. <laughs> I'd also like to express my deepest and most sincere gratitude to my beautiful and lovely wife and children. <laughs> stand up. Stand up. Yes, they want you to stand up. <laughs> Thank you for your everlasting patience and understanding. One of your most beautiful attributes is your loving kindness. You have your mother's heart, and I thank the eternal, the eternal for guiding me to you. Elder Moshe has a lesson that he teaches that a woman is a man's compliment. You are truly my compliment. And this is C-O-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T. <laughs> And that is said in the context of a mathematical term, meaning that you complete me. Come on. The degree of your understanding and support from day one has been insurmountable. And I thank you and I love you dearly for that. The motto of our congregation is Lador Vador, from generation to generation. This model is fitting for us as a community as a whole, as we have continued to move for, to make forward progress over the years, from the days of our founder, Chief Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew. Amen. Chief Matthew established the Commandment Keepers Congregation in 1919 in Harlem, New York. After continued studies and with the blessings of Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford in 1925, Rabbi Matthew established the Ethiopian Hebrew Rabbinical College with the purpose of training other black rabbis for our future generations. Now at this time, this was the only option for an aspiring black rabbi for a biblical education. And black Jews were not welcome in Orthodox Jewish circles in New York. This act of selflessness shows how Rabbi Matthew must have had a vision for our future and an affinity for the progression of our community, for those with him and for those who were to come after him. In efforts to gain recognition of our community by the broader mainstream Jewish community, Rabbi Matthew would apply for membership of the New York Board of Rabbis, but would be rejected for reasons some attributed to the fact that Matthew's, Rabbi Matthew wasn't ordained by one of their seminaries. Amen. While others contended it was a question of his validity or his Jewishness. Amen. Some years later in 1970, Chief Rabbi Matthew would entrust the future of our community into the hands of one of his students of a younger generation, our late Chief Rabbi Levi Ben Levy, Amen. who was ordained by Rabbi Matthew in 1967. Chief Rabbi Levy founded his first congregation, Beth Shalom Ethiopian Hebrew Congregation in Queens, New York. Later in 1983, Rabbi Levy would establish his second congregation, Beth Elohim Hebrew Congregation, also in Queens. Rabbi Levy also had a vision for the future and those to come after him as he spearheaded the formation of the Israelite Board of Rabbis along with other student rabbis of Rabbi Matthew, a body of representation of black rabbis and eventually evolving Rabbi Matthew's Ethiopian Rabbinical College into the Israelite Rabbinical Academy Amen. as it is today. Amen. Sharing this same vision and purpose of educating the current and the future generation is Rabbi Matthew. Rabbi Levy will go on to accomplish many great things, being featured on television programs, hosting radio talk shows, participating in a host of interviews, and bringing our community to the forefront and gaining recognition for the Israelite community. To continue to move forward, Chief Rabbi Levy wanted to find students whose intellect matched their spiritual aptitude. Shortly after establishing his second congregation, 
Chief Rabbi Levy ordained one of his students, our current chief, Chief Rabbi Kaper Shwell Fune, in 1985. <laughs> chief Rabbi Fune became the assistant rabbi of Beth Shalom Ethiopian Hebrew Congregation in Chicago, serving under the late Rabbi Abihu Ben Ruben. After the passing of Rabbi Rubin in 1991, Rabbi Fene would become the rabbi and spiritual leader of Beth Shalom Chicago. Like his predecessor, Chief Rabbi Levi, Levi Ben Levi, Chief Rabbi Fene too would go on to appear on local and national television shows, speak on numerous radio programs, and serving on a host of boards in the Jewish community. Chief Rabbi Fene shared one of our founding fathers, correction, well, one of our founding chiefs' visions of gaining recognition of the, broad, the broader mainstream Jewish community. Uh -huh. And after decades of persistence and focus, Rabbi Fene accomplished a great feat and applied for and was accepted to sit on the New York Board of Rabbis. This is the largest body of rabbis in the world. Chief Rabbi and the current International Israelite Board of Rabbis have went on to develop relationships internationally, traveling to various countries in Africa, including South Africa, Cameroon, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Ghana, Uganda, and Ethiopia. Accompanied by either or Rabbi Baruch or Rabbi Yeshurun. The current board has also established a congregation in Barbados that was recently vis visited by Rabbi Yahat and my fellow student Rabbi, Rabbi Renee Thomas. Amen. All these gentlemen and their colleagues were and are men of vision, visionaries, and they embody two of our progenitor, Avraham's most important attributes, courage and an unwavering faith. Mm. We'll read tomorrow in this week's Parsha that Avraham, or Abram at that time, was told by the Eternal to leave Haran, the country of his, fa his family and his kindred, to go to a land that wasn't even divulged to him at the time. Being a man of great faith, Abram obliged, picked up his wife, his nephew Lot, and all their belongings, and set out on his journey. Abram had to sever ties with his past, and everything that, was familiar with, that he was familiar with up to that point in his life to make way for a better way of living, which was unbeknownst to him at the time. Abraham was a true pioneer, or a trailblazer. The Hebrew word for pioneer is chalutz, from the root word chalat, which according to the Brown Driver Briggs Hebrew English lexicon, a few of the meanings are to draw off, or to draw out, or to withdraw, or alone. As a pioneer, you are definitely in a class alone, as you are the first to make the progress that you've made. I found this definition so interesting because yes, Abraham withdrew himself from his surroundings and the ways of the world as he knew it, leaving his family, and in a sense, being alone. However, Abraham Avinu was never alone in his journey. As we learn later in the portion, the eternal tells Abram, Fear not, for I, the Lord, will be your shield. All of our predecessors were also pioneers and trailblazers in their own way. So now what is incumbent upon us as the next generation of leaders and trailblazers of our community? What will be our challenges? Are we what we need to be as a community, as a people of faith? It is incumbent upon us to become the next visionaries and embody the spirit of Abraham and our predecessors and have the courage to withdraw ourselves and our communities from the voices of conformity and popularity that resonates in today's society and work towards being the best Israelite that we can be. It takes a special kind of courage to be different. And we must have that courage to forge forward carrying out the visions of our teachers and developing our own visions for the future of our community. It is imperative that we continue to educate ourselves, 
our peers, and our children, those that will be our next generation. It is imperative that we continue to build relationships with other communities, and not just those of Jewish faith, but, all, but those of all faiths. Just because someone doesn't believe what we believe in doesn't mean that we can't work with them and love them as a brother in humanity. The world has never been on one accord. There has always been many gods, for this was one of the very reasons that Abraham was told to separate himself from his family. His father Terah never knew the eternal. We must know that the God that we serve is a unique God. Isaiah 46 and 9 tells us, for I am God and there is none else. I am divine and there is none like me. Mm -hmm. We must be sure that we give the next generation knowledge of self and a solid foundation to stand on, mm -hmm. both biblical and black history alike. Amen. We must continually pose the question to ourselves, who are we and what is our purpose? In doing so, we continuously invoke a reiteration of the definition of B'nai Yisrael mm -hmm. and reveal the teachings of Torah. Torah is the tree of life. Embedded in Torah is wisdom. Every Shabbat, as we return the Torah to the Aron Kodesh, we recite an excerpt from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 18. Speaking of wisdom, it is said, she is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, or grasp it, and happy is everyone that retains her. Wisdom, or Torah. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all this paths are peace. There will be obstacles and challenges, as there always have been. But once we identify them, we can better prepare ourselves to overcome them and be sure our children are equipped to face them. Uh -huh. Our failure to do so will only handicap our children yeah. and leave them vulnerable to be miseducated by the world. Anything worth having does not come easy. Mm. Rabbi Baruch taught us in one lesson that the Torah or the law is meant to be antithetical to today's society and the secular world. For it is in your struggle will you find salvation. That's where real gratification is born and developed in the struggle. So it's not meant to be easy. It's gonna take work and will and dedication and perseverance and an abundance of faith. We must believe wholeheartedly and be fully invested in our responsibilities and our duties as children of the covenant. Our current place in society and in our various communities and in that of mainstream Jewish community is far beyond where we were 20, 30, 50 years ago. But do we stop here? No. We must continue to stand on the shoulders of our teachers and our leaders to see further into our future as a people and as a Jewish community. Amen. We have to have visions of developing our own institutions for our children Amen. and make them available to them from the beginning of their education through college level and beyond. It is important for our children to see educators that look like them. As I think back in my school, in all of my schooling, I may have had two male black teachers from kindergarten through the 12th grade. It wasn't until I went to college in Arkansas that many of my male professors look like me. We must never become complacent. Once we become complacent, this will be the beginning of the diminishing of our community. For once you've become complacent, you're no longer working towards anything. We must continue to set new goals and strive to accomplish them. We have to change the demographic of our congregations and appeal to the youth. Come on. Not only, in the presence, not only will the presence of young leadership help with that, but we have to make things relevant to them and meet them where they are. We have to examine what it is we have to offer and find our niche in this way of life. We have to develop the youth programs and get them, and get them engaged and get them involved in our communities. As we continue to work with each other, I pray that we keep the same unwavering faith of our progenitor Abraham and our past and current leaders. 
I pray that the eternal continues to strengthen us all, collectively and individually. I pray that I have said something of significance and all faults are, all faults are my own. Amen. May God continue to bless us and keep us all. Shalom. Well, you see, he's a chip off the old block. Yeah. So we see that where he's going with this. If you heard Chief Rabbi at any given time, you can see where it's going, and that's what we need. We thank God for them all. We have some awards to be presented for great things that they've done. It's not easy, family, four or five years. With Baruch, <laughs> no, just <laughs> it ain't easy. So if they if they got here, they deserve everything they get. Yeah, but he knows I love him. He he, he you know he, he he does and has done good work. But please applaud them for their achievements. Yes. It's not easy. It's not easy. And we want to give them all that energy that we can. Because they're going to go out there in a place that was a little worse than when I first went out and was a little worse than when he first went. And it's just, they got work to do. And we got, they got to know that we're standing directly behind them. Not 200 feet saying, okay, I'll catch you if I can. Right behind them if we want it to work. We are going to have our dean of our academy, Rabbi Baruch Yehuda, who will now come forth and present these awards in different categories. Amen. Giving all praise, honor, and glory to he who lives forever. We bless the name of the living God for all of his grace and his kindness. We thank him for the opportunity to stand before him and to even present those that would continue to lead his people. Giving honor to the Rosh Yeshiva of our academy, Chief Rabbi Kapo Shmuel Fene. <clears throat> to our president and immediate past dean, Rabbi Shalomo Levy. And to our administrator, Rabbi Miriam Fene. We give thanks to the Most High for all that he has done. You know, our students are all uh, they have their own characters. <laughs> and they've gone through things in various ways. And I want you to know we are so looking forward to this class because these men were dedicated to the cause even before the matter took place. Mm -hmm. These are all men of the Bima. Amen. They work tirelessly and they function under the hand of rabbis and, and spiritual leaders throughout our community. And so it is our pleasure to be here with them this day. Our first award is the Perseverance Award. And we are going to award that award to Robert Osriel Devine. Who has shown a spirit of dedication in the perseverance of the study of Torah and the rabbinate over the years of trials and tribulations and have overcome to achieve his life goals. For those of you who do not know, this is the son of the late Rabbi Devine. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
who the first time I heard speak, he trembled my whole person as he opened his mouth. And his son has been in pursuit, going through schools, different schools, and coming and arriving, never giving up the plight to stand here today. So it is my pleasure, sir, to present. Where's my, where's my rabbi? Re, re, rabbi? I think, let's go right to hmm? Rabbi, to Robert Ajo Divine, please receive him as he, he receives his award. Amen. 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 Our next award recipient, our next award recipient is our Trailblazer Award. And this is going to be presented to Elijah Collins. Hallelujah. Who is currently blazing new trails in the Hebraic world as he has taken the challenge to lead and serve communities beyond the congregations of the Israelite Board of Rabbis yes. with the support and the confidence of his mentors. Amen. They're, they're trying to get photographs. Our next award recipient, and you will not be surprised that this is the Leadership Award. Y'all know who's getting that. That is Caper C. Fune who has shown himself a leader <laughs> and problem solver. Among the student body, the congregation, and the community, may he continue to exemplify these attributes all the days of his life. Whenever we had a problem, um, Nehemiah, I gotta get, I gotta, I'm, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it. Nehemiah would say, this, Rabbi, this is what we gonna do. He always made sure that it got done. Amen. May God bless you, sir. So our next award recipient is our Achievement Award, awarded to Renee Thomas, who has proven that overcoming challenges and obstacles is life. Facing them with courage and distinction is character. May he forever keep the charge. I want you to know he took extra classes to make sure that he would be able to speak. And he's a, 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 a Native of Haiti. That's how I said it. Did I say it correctly? Yeah. Haiti. 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 Yes. And he wanted to make sure that everyone took classes and make sure that th this was the dedication on top of the other classes. Yeah. On top of all that. This is what we call achievement. Yeah. Our next award recipient is our scholarship award named after the former dean of the of the student body, Rabbi Malka Netanyahu Scholarship Award is presented to James Earl Walker, Jr. Amen. Hallelujah. As he has proven himself a lover of the academic pursuits of excellence in Torah and the surrounding liturgies, may he continue to personify and set an example for those coming behind him. This final award is going to be a surprise, especially to the awardee. Mm -hmm. The Israelite Academy Humanitarian Award is presented to Mr. Eric Friedman.
Uh, and I have to tell you why. This award says a true advocate for brotherhood yeah, and man. humanity among Kahal Yisrael, regardless of race, creed, or customs. Oh, by standing for dignity and truth in the face of all odds for the betterment of all mankind. Hallelujah. Eric Friedman is on several boards, humanitarian boards and social boards that he's worked with the rabbi. That's how I met him. That's how we were able to put our students by his request in his congregation, which is a conservative congregation. But he said it didn't matter to him. He said he just needed some students to help. They took the students, Robert Osriel Devine and Elijah Collins, and they began to assist him with the support of their rabbi, Rabbi Yeshurun Ben Levy. Give him a, an applause. Give him an applause. The congregation then felt that they wanted to hire Rabbi Collins to be their associate and upon the retirement of their rabbi that he was selected to be their rabbi for the upcoming year. I've, we gave this award to Mr. Friedman because I've been in many rooms and heard a lot of lip service. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I'm, I'm sometimes a little bit too. But I've been in a lot of rooms and had a lot of lip service from people. Oh, the, the, the looks on their faces are priceless. We understand. We get it. They hold their heart. They clutch themselves. But at the end of the meeting, everything goes back to the same. That's not who Eric is. Amen. Eric works with the community in Newark. The upstairs of his Sunday God is used as an African-American museum for art and, and displays and, and, and social awareness. Uh, the National Action Network just gave a prayer visual for Israel and it was hosted at a Harvard Shalom. Amen. These are the kinds of acts that we're talking about when we say about true brotherhood, true friendship, true understanding of our equality as mankind. So I am going to hand this award to my chief rabbi to present it to you, sir, Mr. Eric Friedman. That's crazy. We met in 2009. I went to Newark, New Jersey, to Abba Shalom, invited there. I believe it was like during Black History Month. And we kept in touch. And we also worked together in another organization, Diversity United. Diversity United, where we work with Christian pastors, other Muslims, and rabbis, and Jews as well, to build better bridges of understanding between all humanity. So it was great honor, Rabbi Eric. I just want to say thank you for your friendship. Uh, I'm pretty speechless. Uh, I had no idea, uh, but on behalf of Congregation of Havas Shalom, I accept this uh, in a, in a very heartfelt manner. I, I just want to say I am so Eliyahu and Azriel and I have been talking about today since April. Uh, I am so delighted to be here. I am proud of this congregation, what you do. Uh, I'm delighted to, in su such a meaningful and, and, and special weekend to, to get to share part of it with you. But, I'd also like to give you, as a community, a big yashachoach for all that you do for the Jewish people. Amen. And thank you for your commitment to the 613. Amen.
another world class in my mind. At this juncture, we are going to have student rabbi Azrael Devine to do a class remembrance at this present moment, so please give him your undivided attention. Shalom Aleichem, everyone. I stand before you at this time to bring you a special memorial recognition of a colleague of ours, a student, a fellow student. Before I do that, I'd like to give honor to our creator, Elohim, also to our chief rabbi, who's a great leader among our people, to the dean, the president, and to my mentor, Rabbi Yeshurun ben Levi. The person that we're memorializing today is a gentleman that I grew up with. He was born into this way of life, as I was. We both grew up on the south side of Chicago as kids. We ran together, we partied together. We both had no idea at that time in our lives that we would be pursuing the rabbi, a rabbi position or the smeeker for being a rabbi. Mm. So it was a surprise to me when I came into the academy here, the Hebrew Israelite Academy, that I saw none other than my friend from childhood, whose name had changed to Carmiel, but I knew him as Glenn Davis. Amen. We came into this four, five, six years ago, me, myself, and all my colleagues that are here with me today on this stage, and we pledged to each other that there will be no man left behind that we are gonna all achieve this to the end. And from that, we begin to help each other in classes where we were lacking. If you needed help with the Torah studies, we would help with the Torah studies, with the interpretation of how we interpret law. We help each other if they did, had trouble with the reading of the Hebrew, particularly reading of the Torah without the vowels, we helped each other. At every turn, wherever we needed help, we'd have a study group, numerous of study groups, so that no man will fall short, so that no man will be left behind. So it saddens me right now to say that our dear brother, Carmio Glenn Davis, is no longer with us. <clears throat> but we haven't forgot you. <laughs> You're here with us today. <clears throat> and we memorialize you because we kept our promise that no man would be left behind. And we remember you today, Amen. Glenn Davis. And we ask the Lord that he gives your soul peace Amen. and that you may sleep with the rest of your brothers, <clears throat> the Israelites. Amen. Thank you very much. Shalom. Y'all <clears throat> started late. And, but we expected, you know, it's y'all's fault. We was here. But at this juncture, I'm going to ask our campus administrator, Rabinit Fournier, to come forward at this juncture to address you all and these students. All right. The candidates who I present today studied formally and diligently at the Israelite Academy. 
They have shown suitable proficiency in all areas of study. Equally, or more importantly, they have shown themselves to be reliable, hardworking, and of good moral character. With these qualifications, I present them for graduation. I can sit down with you. Thank you. Having reviewed the records and having the opportunity to question each of the candidates, I find your assessment to be accurate. In addition, we find that they have not yet quenched their thirst for knowledge, the trait we most admire. On behalf of the Israelite Academy, I thank you and the faculty who have labored with these worthy candidates. Will the candidates please rise? My Lord Rosh Yeshiva, it has been reported to me by the campus administrator that the candidates have shown proficiency in all areas of study. Further, they have shown themselves to be persons of integrity, reliable, and of good moral character. I present each of them to you now by name, Elijah Collins. <clears throat> Azriel Divine. <laughs> Capers Fune the Third. <laughs> Elijah Le Prince. <laughs> Renee Thomas. <laughs> and James Walker. I pray you, sir, please confer upon these candidates the degree of Master of Rabbinic Studies with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Hallelujah. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of the International Israelite Board of Rabbis, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Rabbinic Studies with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto. Congratulations, graduates, on a job well done. I'm just going to read one of these to you so you can hear what, it's, what it says, and then we will hand them their degree and let them be received by the chief rabbi and the president. The Israelite Academy established 1925. Upon recommendation of the dean, the faculty, and the approval by the board of directors of the International Israelite Board of Rabbis and the authority vested in them we hereby can bestow upon this class in recognition of their meritorious fulfillment of the prescribed requirements a degree of Master of Rabbinic Studies right. with all the rights, privileges, honors, as well as the obligations, responsibilities thereunto appertaining, awarded on October 27, 2023, corresponding to the 12th day of Keshvan 5784. Elijah Moshe Le Prince. <laughs> Capers Fune. <laughs> Renee Thomas. <laughs> James Earl Walker Jr. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yeah. 
Robert Osriel Devine. <laughs> Elijah Amazing. Collins. Giving all praise, honor, and glory to the King of the universe. We thank him for the opportunity to stand before his presence this day. Amen. And I know you think I'm about to give you a speech, but I'm not. This is going to be my talking for the day. I'm, I'm here to introduce the Rosh Yeshiva who will give final words. I just want to say this. I am thankful to the living God. For those of you who know me, it's hard to separate things with me with God. And I'm thankful. And I'm thankful to have been associated with this class. Amen. These students, these men, who have shown the character of giants. I'm thankful. And I'm proud of them. You know, I always tell them that they have to be better than me to get out. <laughs> they know when I don't, nope, sorry. Nope, that won't work. Because you have to be able to teach me something. Hmm. When I see that you can begin to teach me things freely, then I know it's time to let you go. And so I'm thankful that these men have also been able to teach me. Amen. And I'm thankful to the God of heaven and earth for their life. Without further ado, I invite you to rest your seat as I will bring before you the Rosh Yeshiva, the chief rabbi of the International Israelite Board of Rabbis in the person of Rabbi Kaper Shmuel Fune. You may be seated. Won't be before you long. We want to be certain that the food is still hot, <laughs> the water's cold, and the dessert is good. We'll be reading tomorrow, Lech Lecha, Get Up and Go. But where do you go? The rabbis teach that when Avram Avinu was told to get up and go out, that he first had to get up and go within. He had to journey within his being to the recesses of his self and to question his self. What is all of this that's going on around me? What is my daddy doing? Selling little gods in the market for three dollars. So Abram gave him a test. One night, Abram went in and broke all of the idols that his father used to sell in the market for 225. <laughs> and the next morning, Tarek got up and said, whoa, what is, what's going on here? Who broke all of these idols? Abram said, I don't know. They must have jumped off the shelves and broke. Some of them I saw fighting. And Terak said, Abram, you're not crazy. You know these idols can't talk. You know these idols can't walk. You know these idols are nothing but idols. 
And that's how I make my living to sell and feed you. So Abraham asked one question. If they can't talk, if they can't walk, why are we serving them? Why are we serving idols? That's when the eternal said, I want you to leave your country. I want you to leave your kindred. And the hardest thing was, the last thing, leave your father's house to actually get out. And so many of us went in before we ever went out. So to the graduating class of 2023, I say to you, lech lecha, you've already journeyed within your being. Now it's time to journey into the world. Now it's time to rise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the eternal has risen upon you. There's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of healing to do. We have to be able to break through some of these divisions that are dividing our world. You are going to be charged with these responsibilities. Never be afraid to be true to yourself, true to your people, and true to your God. The eternal will be with you to protect you and keep his angels of mercy. Mikael, Gabriel, Urrael, Raphael, and the all-encompassing power of El Shaddai about you. This is our hope for you as we venture, as you venture into the world that is coming and standing before you. I don't know if you've had the opportunity to move your tassels yet. Not yet. Not yet? Waiting on you. You're waiting on me? <laughs> <laughs> so stand up, my beloved brothers, and rise and shine, and you may now transfer your tassels. Right. Hallelujah. I now declare the 2023 commencement exercises of the Israelite Academy closed. Hallelujah. 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 Where are the marshals? Before we recess, um, the campus administrator said there will be some refreshments served to you in about 30 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yes, ma'am. 20 minutes. So I just ask that you would keep the aisle clear as we recess from the room and the, gradu the graduates will be back in the room for you to congratulate them and take pictures with them. And we are thankful to the Most High for your presence. Marshals, please, if you would lead us out. What are we singing as we go out?